Hello there. In today's video, we're going to be considering discussing the study article 26 for this week, September 2nd to 8th, 2024. Friends, we extend you a warm welcome. And now, let's jump right in. So, the study article 26 is entitled Make Jehovah Your Rock. The theme text is 1 Samuel 2 2. There is no rock like our God. The focus of this study article is learning why Jehovah is referred to as a rock and how we can imitate his rock-like qualities. So, let's start with the first one and we have to read Psalm 18.46. It says, Jehovah is alive. Praise be my rock. Let the God of my salvation be exalted. And the question for this one says, To what does David compare Jehovah as recorded at Psalm 18.46? And this answer is really simple. He compared it as a rock. That's what we read in this scripture. Simple answer. Paragraph 2. What? Why should we be interested in the fact that David called Jehovah my rock? And it's really important to us considering why Jehovah is referred to as a rock and what that metaphor teaches us about him. We'll also learn how we can some to view him as a rock. And finally, some ways that we can imitate his qualities in our lives. Okay, the first one. Why Jehovah is a rock? Era 3. How does the Bible often use the word rock? And into meanings to a positive context. The Bible uses the term rock as a word picture to help us grasp qualities that Jehovah possesses. Okay, and it often appears in passages that praise him as a God who's without equal. And we have some examples here. Deuteronomy 32 4, 1 Samuel 2 2, and more verses in a positive way. But on the other hand, and it's about the context, we know you could use a stone, a rock, to attack a person, to affect or harm a person in a negative way. But this is about a positive context. Era 4, and we have the question, but first one, the scripture in Psalm 94, verse 22, it says, But Jehovah will become a secure refuge for me. My God is my rock of refuge. How is Jehovah a refuge? And if we think for a moment, uh, just as a huge rock, can be a person's hiding place from a threatening storm, literal storm. Jehovah safeguards us when we face situations that threaten our well being. So it is literal in all senses, even if it's a literal storm or disaster, and sometimes in a metaphorical way, we are facing some life storms, big challenges, big troubles, like storms, and it keeps us safe and prevents us from suffering lasting harm. Number five, how can Jehovah become a rock-like refuge? And we find the answer in Philippians 4, 6, 7 is really essential. By praying. 
how we start our day. Many people start their day watching immoral content on social media, checking their social media. What about a Christian? Are we praying, starting our day praying to Jehovah? When we pray, He gives us the peace of God that safeguards our heart and mind. And we have the opportunity to thank God all His blessings and kindness in our life, in our lives. And the Bible says, in everything by prayer and supplication, along with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known to God. So it's really important. And at the end says, through our Lord Jesus Christ. So prayer is essential. And we can survive if we are, if someone is not praying to Jehovah. We have the example here of a brother. He was in this stressed moment. And he said, I always pray to Jehovah. I ask for peace in my heart and for wisdom. And at the end, he, he went through this situation. And it's a, something very essential for him was praying. Okay, and number six. Why can we always rely on Jehovah? And we have another scripture in Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. And it says, You'll safeguard those who fully lean on you. You'll give them continuous peace because it's in you that they trust. Trust in Jehovah forever. For Jah Jehovah is the eternal rock. So, why can we always rely on Jehovah? That's a good question. And we trust that by obeying him, even during difficult times, we'll benefit, as the Bible says in Isaiah 40. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Number six, we are. And that's, that's the example, like a rock that is immovable. Jehovah is always there for us. We can trust him because he's eternal rock. That's metaphorical, but it's very appropriate, this comparison. He'll always be alive to keep his promises. Actually, he's the source of life. He's there 30, 24 hours, 24-7, always able to listen our prayers and give us the support we need. And as the Bible says in 2 Samuel 22:26, he's loyal to those who serve him. And another important point in and probably you notice that the same verses we read we considered last week in the last Watchtower study, we also again, for a second time, we are considering again Hebrews 16 and 11, 6. And the idea conveying is that Jehovah will reward us for our loyal work. It might be an injustice from him to forget the loyal love, the loyal love, loyal work. Of his servants. Of course, that scenario is just simple, impossible. Okay, now let's move on to the next one, paragraph seven. And what will we experience when we rely on Jehovah? And as the Bible says in Isaiah 48, 17, 18, we'll experience his peace, his support. Even if we are going through difficult times, it will benefit us. And as we experience his support, our confidence in him will grow. 
So sometimes pain is part is part of the process, and will then be better prepared to face trials that only Jehovah can get us through. And we find example of this dear brother, he was in prison, but he said this interesting statement, I learned to have greater trust in Jehovah because I was all alone and had no control of the situation. There are brothers and sisters in and they feel in their, their lives are like a prison, mental, emotional prison. Their circumstances are like a prison and they feel like a prison. They are in a prison and if we feel alone, at the same time we could experience we could experience Jehovah's help in our lives. How? Making him our rock. That's the point. When we make Jehovah our rock, when we rely fully on him. Pair of eight. Question eight. Why can we say that Jehovah is stable? And again, this metaphorical rock, similar to a massive rock, Jehovah is firm and stable. In other words, he is consistent in his personality and unshakable in his purpose, as the Bible says in Malachi 3, 6. And even when he faced the rebellion in Eden, he didn't change his purpose. And, of course, in 2 Timothy 2.13 says, Jehovah can deny himself, cannot deny himself. What does that mean? This means that no matter what happens or what others do, he'll never deviate from his qualities, his purpose, his, per his promise, his standards, and the help he's gonna give us. Question B, it says, how do we benefit from having God as a rock? And we have Psalm 7, 62, 6, 7, read, indeed, he's my rock and my salvation, my secure refuge. I'll never be shaken upon God depends my salvation and my glory, my strong rock, my refuge is God. With this positive psalm, we find the answer. It, the answer is, with confidence in our stable God, we can look to Him for salvation and for help to cope during turbulent times. With confidence, that's the benefit for us. Pair of nine. What do you learn from Tatiana's experience? In one word, we want to highlight, and is very similar than the other experience, is this expression. She, when I found myself literally on my own, it was challenging. In other words. She was alone, literally alone. And some friends, they are afraid of being alone in life. They can't accept the idea or just imagine the idea of being alone by their own. And if we were instead of this sister, if we were on a shoes, how we react. And it was challenging, of course, there's no doubt, but that's something we learn. We, we must learn of being alone, walking some path alone. If we think about our Lord Jesus, he was with his friends, his disciples, 
even the Apostle Paul, his best friend Timothy. But there were some time where they were alone by their own. And it's part of the process, learning to be alone in some trials. And another way we, another lesson we learn is the way we observe or the perspective of our trials and understanding instead of thinking like we are victims, we could observe these trials like an opportunity to demonstrate our loyalty to Jehovah in what side we are defining ourselves through our loyalty and love to Jehovah. And that's what she she did and it worked. Here of ten, how can Jehovah be a rock now? Of course we won't wait to be in prison because our beliefs is now now is the time when we can strengthen our conviction that Jehovah is our rock, is our helper, our savior, and he'll provide whatever we need to endure faithful faithfully. And we this is the time to have a, or strengthen our personal relationship with him. This is the time to reject temptations, reject sin, being in holiness, serving him in holiness. It's really important reading Bible accounts and experiences of modern day witnesses. But it's not just about reading, because someone might say he already know this experience since he was a child. Now the next step is discerning how God displayed rock-like qualities to support his servants and finding these spiritual gems, these treasures or practical lessons to our lives. That's now the next step. Imitate Jehovah's rock-like qualities. And this is really important, friends, if we think, for example, about the prophet Elijah. He was like this brother. In his brother is in prison. That's the picture. But Elijah was in a similar situation. He was in a cave. And he was praying to Jehovah. And probably you remember what he was asking for. Just one thing he was asking from Jehovah. You remember what he was asking for? Just one thing. To die. He wanted to die. That's, that's it. But what Jehovah answered him through the angel. And the angel said, But... The answer was from the angel, from Jehovah himself, get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. So friends, that's the example, we already know it, but sometimes we are in situations like this brother in prison, mental or emotional prison, or like Elijah, and there are friends in the congregation and they they want just die. And we must be careful with that feelings. But Jehovah is saying to us, get up and eat. For the journey ahead of us is too much for us. There are more blessings waiting for us. And we can't imagine what Jehovah has for us in our future. So sometimes that's what we need. That's what we need to do. Just get up and eat and keep walking, keep moving. So friends, probably we already know this experience, this account. But now we have another spiritual gem from this biblical account. 
imitate Jehovah's rock-like qualities. And paragraph 11, why do we want to imitate Jehovah's rock-like qualities? And in that way, we want to be happy because he's a happy God. On the other hand, we'll be able to help to build up the congregation, the brothers and sisters who are in need. And that's what Jesus expects from his servants. For example, he called Peter with the name Cephas, translated Peter, and this means piece of rock. So this indicated that he could become a source of comfort and stability in the congregation. And according to the context, even the elders, they... The Bible describes them as the shadow of a massive crack that illustrates how they protect in those in the congregation. In Isaiah 32, 2, we read about it. But not just the elders, all we, brothers and sisters, could imitate Jehovah's rock-like qualities. 12. Describe ways in which we can be a refuge for others. Let's think for a moment if we hear that some friends suffered a natural disaster or a civil unrest or a war, we could offer a refuge for them, a literal refuge. We could show them some hospitality. And we could also provide material, emotional, and spiritual help for our brothers. That's what Jesus and Jehovah expect from us. But on the other hand, if we turn a blind eye, if we are doing like nothing is happening to them, or we ignore them when they are under these trials, that won't help us. That, will, that won't help the congregation at all. So, and we don't, we shouldn't expect that a natural disaster or a civil war is happening around us. Right now, we could think about how we do before and after our meetings and we could contribute to the warm atmosphere in the congregation. How? Be friendly with our brothers and sisters. If we think for a moment, the normal thing we expect is that people in this world, they, they be harsh and cold and stressful with, with us. But we expect the opposite when we are in the congregation. But it's hard to say, but sometimes it's the opposite. There are some friends in some congregations and they are trying others in a harsh and cold way. And people in the world, on the opposite way, they are trying with love and kindness our brothers and sisters so that's that shouldn't be is the opposite that we expect and it's up to us so we would try to do our best we wanna to we wanna do all all the friends in the congregation feel loved refreshed and secure 13. How can elders in particular become a refuge for others? And it's a big responsibility they have on their shoulders. There is no doubt. And they can become a refuge to those in the congregation who endure literal or figurative storms. How? Immediately when they apply base any Bible-based guidance, and they are able to help the friends 
during disasters and medical emergencies, they take the initiative to arrange practical assistance. So they should, a good elder is not just listening and say, sorry for you, hope things get better, and don't forget, trust in Jehovah and seeking first his kingdom, and that's it, and do whatever you have to do. No. Jehovah's organization is saying in this paragraph, the elders, the good elders should arrange practical assistance. And they also offer spiritual help. Okay. It's a big responsibility, but it's really important. In that way, they could become a refuge for the friends in the congregation. 14. How can we show that we are relatable? And we want to be with our friends, not just in a gathering time, but when they are during difficult times, as the Bible says in Proverbs 17, 17. And anybody might be in a gathering, in a picnic day, but not anybody might be in difficult times. So it's really important that you don't forget who of your friends they used to be with you in your difficult times and who weren't in your difficult times. It's really important to take note. In that way, we could appreciate and recognize who are really friends. And another word is finding out in Matthew 5.37 when we keep our word, our promises, it doesn't matter if it's a small promise. And by doing our best to be punctual. So not being punctual is normalized for many people. But we could do our best about this matter. If we receive an assignment, we try to achieve it according to the instructions we receive. In that way, we show that we are relatable. 15. How does the congregation benefit when the elders are relatable? And of course, they feel supported. They feel Jehovah's love and Jehovah's organization love and care for. And the elders have this big responsibility. Sometimes they are giving counsel and they must be careful not going beyond what is being written in the Bible. As 1 Corinthians 4, 6 says, they base their counsel on the Bible and the publications, of course, theocratical publications of the faithful and discreet slave, rather than on their personal opinions. If an elder is doing so, he's is doing like his own opinion is a divine revelation or inspiring word of Jehovah, that's a terribly mistake because it will be hurtful for the sheep, for the friends in the congregation, especially if Jehovah's organization has said that's a personal decision or a conscious matter. The elders must be careful. They never impose their own opinions. And there are a great atmosphere where the elders are respecting and doing so. And lastly, but not less important, when they keep private matters confidential and who follows through by doing what he says he'll do. So, this is really important. The elders never say they're supposed what's going on with some friends in the congregation, private matters, some discipline reasons, etc. And some time ago, we received that Watchtower study where uh, some uh, the elders, they were doing a shepherding call. And the next image, the elder was with his family. And Jehovah's organization says in that in that picture 
the, the statement, the elders always keep confidential matters and they don't reveal these confidential matters to their family, spouse, wife, etc. 16. How do we benefit ourselves and others when we are stable? And it's really difficult because being mental, emotional, spiritual, stable is a challenge, especially before these difficult, critical times. But if we got it, we can be a good influence on others if we are firm for what is right and if we make decisions that are solidly based on Bible principles. So it's really easier to say, but hard to do, there's no doubt. And or it's not impossible, and with Jehovah's help, we'll make it. Actually, many of you friends, you've been doing so, and kudos to you. I want to congratulate you because of your loyalty in your family, in your own congregation. That's really important, and there's no doubt you are a good example, and your presence and example motivate others not through just not through your words but through your presence and your example and it's really important we are not in decisive and steady or easily swayed, swayed by false teachings and worldly thinking as the bible says in Ephesians Ephesians 4:14 4, like the waves of the sea and to do so, it's really important to think about in who we put our confidence. The Bible says, no, no one who puts his confidence in Jehovah and his beloved son, Jesus Christ, is going to be disappointed. The Bible says, so we should no longer be children, tossed about as by waves, and carried here and there by every wind of teaching by means of the trickery of men, by means of cunning in deceptive schemes. So there are many teachings around us, the new age, spirituality, and people who are trying to contact different beings of different dimensions, etc. But we have a solid base to our faith. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. He's also the rock of our faith. And the Catholic Church, they teach that Peter, the Apostle Peter, is the rock of faith, the first Pope, but actually that's wrong. The real rock of faith is our Lord Jesus. That's what he said in Matthew 16. All this entire chapter, and then in his letters, the Apostle Paul, he recognized that the solid vase, the solid rock to our faith is Jesus. And of course, Jehovah, as we read in this Psalm book, so our faith in Jehovah and his promises keeps us balanced when we receive this bad news or this crazy theories or teachings around us. 17. What helps elders to be stabilizing influence? And Jehovah's organization has been encouraging the elders to be men of Bible principles, mature men, and spiritual men. They never think that just because they have the privilege, automatically they become spiritual and mature and they don't need to pray, they don't need to depend on Jehovah, they don't need to have a spiritual routine. They never think like that. These men are stabilizing influence on others through their example and strengthen the congregation by holding firmly to the faithful word. So they respect and follow Jehovah's organization instructions. 
and they are setting up a good example uh, and shepherding the congregation with love and kindness, really important, with empathy. And they reflect this example, and the congregation also reflect their example. So, so it's really important, their role, to help the friends in the congregation. Finally, why do we want to praise Jehovah and draw ever closer to Him? And the answer is because we choose to, because we want to do. That's the answer. We choose to. No one is forcing us to do so. Is because we understand these concepts and we want to apply it in our lives. So, as the psalmist says, we declare, He's my rock. He's, he doesn't say, our rock is my rock. And we notice the cursive style of writing is because it's a personal relationship. This is personal. So, the Bible says in Galatians that salvation is a personal matter confident that he always helps us help us to to drive spiritually so friends that's a consideration for this study thanks for watching if you are here at this point of this video we thank you so much that means a lot for us and again thanks for coming thanks for watching we hope you have a wonderful day and hope to see you in our next broadcast.